Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over some examples that are more uh, test related, test style, problems involving functions and data. So in this example, we have u and v, both being functions of x, defined such that u evaluated at 1 is equal to e squared, v evaluated at 1 is equal to 2, the derivative of u, u prime evaluated at 1 is equal to 2e squared, and v prime of 1 is equal to 3. With all that information, determine the slope of the tangent line to the function f of x, which is equal to v over the line of u, at x equals 1. Okay, so breaking this question down. First thing is that the slope of the tangent line to f of x at x equals 1 is given by The derivative of the function f prime of x at x equals 1. So we want to find f prime and then we want to evaluate it at 1. So I'm just going to write down the function again f of x is equal to v over ln u. And to take the derivative of this, we're going to need a quotient rule. This is a top function over bottom function. According to the quotient rule, we'll have the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. So our bottom function is the ln of u. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the top. The top function is v. The derivative of v is v prime. Minus the top function, v multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of ln of u, well, that's like ln of w. The derivative of ln of u is u prime divided by u. And then all divided by the bottom squared, the ln of u all squared. Now we want to evaluate this at one. So f prime of one, that's going to be the ln of u of one times v prime of 1. Recall these are functions of x minus v at 1. These are multiplications multiplied by u prime of 1 over u of 1 all divided by the ln of u of 1 all squared. Now we have to use our data. Don't plug in the data until after you've taken all the necessary derivatives. So here's our data. Okay. Just gonna leave some blanks. Okay. Now, u of 1 is e squared, so we have ln of e squared, v prime of 1 is 3, minus v of 1, v of 1 is equal to 2, and then u prime of 1 is 2 e squared, u of 1 is e squared, and then down at the bottom we have ln of u of 1, u of 1 is e squared again. Now we can use a cancellation law in a few spots, cancel ln of e ln of e will be left with the powers. So we have 2 times 3 minus, and then I forgot to cancel. I didn't forget, but there's lots of stuff going on. Forgot to cancel out the uh, e squared on top, the e squared on the bottom, and that fraction there. Oh, don't do that. And then we'll have 2 times 2. On the bottom, we have 2 squared. So we're going to get 6 minus 4 over 4, so 2 over 4, which is 1 half, or 0 0.5 if you need to put it in decimal form. That's the end of that one. So we need a quotient rule, we need to use the 
special log chain rule. And then we had to use our data. Okay, next question is asking us not for the slope of the tangent line, so I'm going to look at it carefully. This is asking for the entire equation of the tangent line. So the entire equation of a tangent line is going to require us to do a few steps. We're eventually going to want y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, where y1, that comes from f evaluated at the x-coordinate, which is ln 2. Well, the equation of the tangent line at that point. So that's going to be 8 times e to the negative 3 ln 2. Let's simplify. I'm going to bring the negative 3 up as a power using a log property. So 8 times e to the ln of 2 to the power of negative 3. You can use a cancellation law. The e ln cancels. Okay, so we'll have 8 times 2 to the power of negative 3, which is 8 times 1 over 2 to the 3, so 8 times 1 over 8, which is 1. Now, another piece we need is we need m. m is equal to f prime evaluated at the ln of 2. So we have to calculate f prime of x. f of x is 8 times e to the negative 3x. f prime of x is 8 multiplied by e to the w times w prime, e to the negative 3x times negative 3. So a negative 24 e to the negative 3x, multiplying the constants together. Now we're going to evaluate this at ln 2, f prime evaluated at ln 2. We'll have negative 24 times e to the negative 3 ln 2. We have to use, use the same trick, bring the 3 up as a power. Negative 24 times e to the ln of 2 to the power of negative 3. So negative 24 times e ln cancels. Two to the power of negative three. So negative 24 times one over eight, which is negative three. And now we can put everything together. Thus, y minus the y value, y minus 1, equals the slope that we found, m, so negative 3, times x minus the x-coordinate, x minus the ln of 2. That will be our answer. And then it could be rearranged in a variety of ways, but this is one format that's acceptable to write your slope of your tangent line in. Another example, this one is a, a peculiar format. It's asking us for the value of k that causes something to happen. So we have x in here, we have k in here, there's logs, there's lots of unfriendly stuff, but we'll break it down. Oh, there's one more unfriendly thing. It's asking us to if the value of k that causes this function to have a horizontal tangent line. So we have to know what that means. So horizontal lines, whether they're tangent lines or not, have a slope of zero. And then since the slope of a tangent line equals f prime of 
x and put it all together, this question is telling us that f prime of x is equal to 0 at x equals 4. Solve for k. So that's breaking down what the question is really asking us to do. It's asking us to take the derivative, set it equal to 0, not to solve for x. That's what we usually do when we're looking for horizontal tangent lines. We're, instead, we're told the x value this happens at. We're told that this happens when x is 4. And then, okay, what does k have to be for that to happen? So let's take the derivative, go do all the steps. I'm just going to write the function down first. f of x is the ln of all that stuff, kx squared minus x cubed. And I hope I hope a good answer comes out of this. Okay, we take the derivative f prime of x is, this is a w prime over w type of derivative with w is equal to kx squared minus x cubed. And the question should really say that k is a constant. I'll add that in. It's not a function. Okay, so we need w prime. w prime is 2kx minus 3x squared. The same thing you would do if that was like a 7x squared. You would say the derivative is just 2 times 7x or 7 times 2x, same thing. We would, since we don't know what k is, we're just going to leave just 2 times k times x. Now I'm going to plug that in. So 2 kx minus 3x squared divided by kx squared minus x cubed. So that's our f prime of x. Now we're going to use our data. Now the data says that f prime of x is equal to 0 at x equals 4. So I'm going to replace the f prime with a 0 and replace all the x's with 4's. So 2k times 4 minus 3 times 4 squared divided by k times, keep writing it in, 4 squared minus 4 cubed. Okay, we can cross multiply, multiply both sides by the denominator by 16k minus 64. We're multiplying that by zero, it's going to completely disappear. So zero is equal to 8k minus 3 times 16, 48. I'm going to add 48 to both sides. 48 is equal to 8k. Now I should write down the step that was done. Now let's cross multiply. And then divide both sides by 8. k is equal to 48 over 8, which is 6. That's our answer. So only that value of k will cause this function to have a horizontal tangent line at x equals 4. Okay, another example. <coughs> Find the value of the constant k that causes f of x equals a log function involving k, and f of x equals another log function involving k to have parallel tangent lines when x is 0. So we have to break down what this means. Parallel lines have the same slope. The fact that these tan the tangent lines to these functions at that x-coordinate are parallel tells us, oh, and the question really should have one of these functions named something else, so my apologies. By the time you download the note, it'll, it'll be fixed. I just didn't notice until now. So I'll call one of them g of x. So what we need 
we need f prime of zero to equal g prime of zero, then solve for k. Since f prime of zero gives you the slope of the tangent line for the first function when x is zero, g prime of zero tells you the slope of the tangent line for, for the second function when x is equal to zero. For them to be parallel, the tangent lines must have the same slope. That means these derivatives must be equal to each other. So I'm going to have to go ahead and calculate each of those derivatives. f of x is equal to the ln of k squared plus 54x. So f prime of x is w prime over w, which is the derivative of k squared is 0 because k is a constant. Derivative of 2 squared, derivative of 4 is 0. Just because you square something doesn't mean the 2 comes down. The constant squared is still constant. Okay, the derivative of 54x is 54. And then we're dividing by k squared plus 54x. So w. And then we can drop the, the 0. So this is just 54 over k squared plus 54x. Now g prime of x. I'll have to calculate that next. g of x is 2e to the kx, which is like 2e to the w. We take the derivative. We're going to get 2e to the w times w prime. So we'll get 2e to the uh, kx multiplied by the derivative of kx. So if k was 7, that'd be the derivative of 7 times x, which is 7. But since k is k, the derivative of k times x is just going to be k. Okay, then we're going to set them equal. After we plug in 0, for x, not for k, right? Leave k alone. So we have 54 over k squared plus 54 times 0. So k squared plus 0 equals 2e to the 0 times k. So 2e to the 0 multiplied by k. Anything to the 0 is 1. So we have 54 over k squared is equal to 2k. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, multiply both sides by k squared. So 54 divided by 2 is 27, is equal to k cubed, and that means that k is equal to 3. Cube root of 27, which is 3. That's our answer. So for that value of k, these two functions will have parallel tangent lines at x is equal to 0. Okay, next question. U and V are defined as general functions of X and we're given some data. We're told what U and V are equal to at seven and we're told what their derivatives are equal to at seven. And then we're asked for the derivative of uh, H at seven. H of X is defined as a combination of U and V. So before taking the derivative, what I notice is that there's a ln of v over x in the expression. And when we take derivatives of expressions like that, it's going to save us a little bit of grief if we use log properties to split it up. And that will help us avoid quotient rules, especially quotient rules combined with log functions, which are kind of messy. So 33e to the negative u plus 7 ln v minus ln x. So that was using ln of m over n is equal to the ln of m minus the ln of n. And then I'll multiply that through, still not taking the derivative yet, 3e e to the negative u plus 7 ln u 
minus 7 log of x. The next step, we want to take the derivative of this. So now we differentiate h prime of x is equal to 33 e to the negative u multiplied by, so this is like an e to the function. So when we take the derivative of e to a function, we get e to the function times the derivative of that function. So e to the negative u times negative u prime plus 7 times the derivative of ln u. The derivative of ln u is u prime over u minus the derivative of 7 ln x, so 7 times 1 over x. It's not x prime over x because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. x is not a function, x is a variable. So we don't need an x prime. I mean, you can put an x prime if you want. x prime means the derivative of, of x with respect to x. And the derivative of 1 times x is just 1. So you don't have to. You don't have to write that. Like we never do, right? OK, now we have to uh, plug in our data. So plug in the data that's here, since we're asked for the derivative at 7. So h prime of 7 is equal to 33 e to the negative u of 7 times negative u prime of 7 plus 7 times u prime of 7 over u of 7 minus 7 times 1 over 7. And then we can simplify. 33 times e to the negative u of 7 is ln 11. And then multiply that by negative u prime of 7. u prime of 7 is 4. And then plus 7 times. Oh, oh I accidentally changed my u's to v's. My apologies. I'll fix all those. So it was v prime over v, not u prime over u. v prime of 7 over v of 7. And now v of 7 is 5. Or v prime of 7 is 15, rather. We'll screw that one up. So we have a 15. And then v of 7 is 5. And then we have minus 7 times 1 over 7, which is minus 1. And let's keep going. Let's keep simplifying. We can't use a cancellation law, e to the negative log of 11. There's a minus 1 in front of the log function. We have to bring that up as a power. 33 e to the log of 11 to the power of negative 1 times negative 4 down below, not an exponent, plus we have 7 times 3 minus 1. OK, so we have 33 e log cancels. So 33 times 1 over 11, which is 11 to the negative 1, times negative 4, plus 21 minus 1. So 33 divided by 11 is 3. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 21 minus 1 is 20, so plus 20, and we get 8 as our answer. And if something's messed up there, if I made a mistake, let me know. Let me know if there's any arithmetic errors. Uh, to recap what happened there, we did use a, a trick at the beginning. We used the log property to rewrite the function before taking the derivative, and that just made the derivative easier to do. Uh, we had to use the chain rule, the chain rule for exponential functions and the chain rule for log functions. And then after taking the derivatives, we had to plug in the data, and we had to be careful that the, the data was plugged in correctly. And then there's one kind of mean step at the end, simplifying e to the power of negative log 11, recognizing that 
a negative sign in front really means multiplication by negative one, and we can bring the negative one power up. So there's a lot of like little things in here that can mess you up. That's not an easy question.